Today I'm gonna to teach you how to make one of our family favorite meals, a lemon herb salmon that you bake in the oven, super simple, and this decadent, creamy, so delicious Parmesan risotto that I made in the Instapot. Now if you love decadent homemade from scratch dinners, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and let's get started. We're gonna start with the salmon. The first thing that I'm going to do is make the compound butter that we're going to be putting on this salmon for flavoring. We're gonna start with some softened butter. For herbs, I like to use dill, dried parsley, and ground celery seed. So salt and pepper. And I like to use fresh garlic. And now you just mash that all together to create the compound butter. So mix that until it's evenly combined. Now you want to take out your salmon fillet and pat it dry with some paper towels on both sides. Now we're going to take our compound butter and we're going to add half of it to the first side of our salmon. Now because salmon is cold, because it's been in the fridge, hopefully your salmon's been in the fridge, uh, it's not going to want to stick. The butter and the wet salmon don't like to stick together. So I add it in small plops and then I just do my best to, to spread it as evenly as possible. You can use a spatula, but I find that honestly, I tend to get it uh, a little bit more evenly spread just by using my hands. Now, if you have really wide heavy duty foil, go ahead and line your baking dish with that. I only have normal width foil, so I've taken two pieces and I've made them really long. And I'm going to put the shiny side together and I'm just going to fold the top down a couple times. And what that's gonna do is give us a much larger sheet. Now I have some thinly sliced lemons and I'm going to lay them on the sheet in the shape of the salmon. Now depending on how thickly or thinly you cut your, uh, your lemons, this could take anywhere from um, two to three lemons to have enough for this first side. But you wanna make sure you have enough lemons for both sides of your salmon. Now we're gonna take our salmon and we're gonna flip it over so that all the herb butter that we added is now on the bottom. Now we're gonna add more herb butter to the top. Now it's okay that the butter is not perfectly covering your salmon because as it melts in the oven, the butter is going to spread and the herbs are going to get everywhere. Now add more lemons to the top. Now we're going to bring the ends of the foil together and twist it to seal everything in. And now it's time to bake the salmon. The real question is how long do you bake it? Because the one thing you don't want to do is over bake fish. That's just that good. Uh, so a general rule of thumb is bake for 10 minutes for every inch of thickness the filet is, or bake for 15 minutes for every uh, pound the filet is. If you're, I tend to go by the poundage the, if you're using a large filet. If you're using small thin filets, then I usually go by the thickness. So this is about an inch and a half in thickness, so that would be about 15 minutes. But I know that's not going to be enough for this big sized filet. So if we go by poundage, that's gonna be about uh, 37 minutes. So what I tend to do is, because one side of the filet is actually very, very thin, while one side of the filet is on the thicker side. So I tend to put this in for 20 minutes. At that point, I open this up, I take all the thin salmon out, I just start slicing until I get up to where it's not quite cooked all the way, we have our first servings, I wrap it back up, I put it back in the oven, and by the time the filet is the rest of the way cooked, uh, we're ready for seconds. So I got my Instapot last year and at first I wasn't sold on it. It took me a while to discover the things that I felt the Instapot truly excels in. For example, I don't think it makes good pasta. I would just but I'm really about texture. Uh, and so when everybody else was raving about spaghetti and mac and cheese, I'm just like, nope. <laughs> but I have discovered it makes obviously amazing hard boiled eggs, makes fantastic yogurt. It is wonderful for any bean dish that you want to make and it makes fantastic risotto. Now risotto is something that typically you're adding a warm broth a ladle at a time while you're storing it and cooking the rice, getting the starch released, creating this creamy texture, uh, and it's very, very hands-on. And so to have a way to make it delicious, but also quick and easy is fantastic. So we're gonna start by pressing the saute button. We're gonna add the butter. Now we're gonna add our onion to this. And you want to stir that and let the butter melt all the way. Now we're going to add 
some fresh garlic, and you want to keep sauteing until the garlic is fragrant and the onions are translucent. Now it's time to add our rice and saute that for a little bit of time. Now you want to make sure that you're using a risotto rice to get the correct results. This is also when I add the salt and pepper. Now you want to make sure that you continually stir this. We're looking to cook the rice until it is mostly clear with just a little white dot in the center. And you want to continue to stir this because we don't want anything to burn to the bottom. The bane of most Instapot recipes is of course the burn notification and it especially happens when you have used the saute function at the beginning of a recipe. One way around that is to do any of your sauteing on the stovetop and then just dump the ingredients in the Instapot and pressure cook it. Uh, but I don't like doing that many dishes, so I like to use the saute function in the Instapots. So there's two things that you can do for the, to help not get the burn notification. Uh, one is to use the non-stick liner. That is really going to help us deglaze the pan. Two, deglazing the pan really, 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 really good. Now what that is, is adding just a little bit of the liquid that we're going to be using for this recipe. And as it hits that hot inner pot, uh, it's going to be easier to stirring and clean anything that might have cooked onto the bottom of the pot. You want the bottom of the pot to be pretty clean and in fact entirely clean and smooth before you start the pressure cooker or you will get the burn notification. I cannot stress enough how important a good deglazing is. Now for deglazing you can use a half a cup of wine or a half a cup of broth and use that liquid as you stir with a nice flat spoon and get any cooked on elements completely cleaned off the pan. And now add the rest of the broth. Give it one last quick stir. Add the lid. Cancel the saute function and pressure cook for five minutes. Now because we were using the saute function and the pot was already warm, it should take less time to come up to pressure, which is fantastic because it makes the whole dish even faster. Once that's done, we're going to quick release. Once that's released all the way, Open it up. Give it a quick stir. Add the final butter and Parmesan. Now I always recommend and use freshly grated Parmesan. I buy it in a wedge and I grate it myself. And stir that until the butter has melted. At this point, give it a taste and see if it needs anything else like a little bit more Parmesan, maybe a little bit more salt, um, and then we're ready to pull out the salmon. Usually for me, the salmon and the risotto are done at the same time. Let's open this up. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. Look how beautiful and flaky that salmon looks. It looks amazing and we are ready to serve. Now I'd like to add a little bit of extra of the freshly grated Parmesan on top. Now we get to give it a shot. Mm. That Parmesan risotto just like melts in your mouth. The Instant Pot makes it so easy to make this decadent rich meal. I just adore it. Oh, and the salmon is so flaky. Mm. I love that fresh lemon flavor that uh, this salmon gives. This is one of my family's all time favorite meals. My kids ask for it all the time and I love how easy and quickly it comes together. Um, I would love to hear in the comment box down below what one of your favorite weekday meals is to make your family. And if you have a favorite way of making salmon or rice, I would love to hear about that as well. Now I'm going to finish eating my dinner and you can watch the next video.